Number 42. Polymers are large molecules composed of simple units repeated many times. Thus, they often have relatively simple empirical formulas. Calculate the empirical formulas of the following polymers, and then we have lucite, aka pexiglass, which is 59.9% carbon, 8.06% hydrogen, and 32.0% oxygen. Okay, so what is lucite or plexiglass, right? What are we actually looking at? Well, these, these are just trade names for basically synthetic glass. Plexiglass, literally glass, right? Plexiglass is a synthetic glass. So you see these all over the place. Your car windshield is uh, a synthetic glass. Could be lucite, could be plexiglass. Uh, airplane um, windows, those are also synthetic glass. And because of the pandemic, uh, they've, you know, we've used a ton of this as dividers, like glass dividers. If you go to maybe like your, your local library or your bank and you see the glass divider between, you know, the person behind the glass and you, that's a synthetic glass as well. Those are just huge pieces of, uh, you know, synthetic glass, but it's a polymer. It's just one single unit repeated millions of times, thousands of times, maybe even billions of times. Let's find out what that small unit is. Now, they gave us percents, and we just have to find the empirical formula. On the playlist already, we've done tons of problems finding out empirical formulas, right? There's a four-step process, and it is this. So let me just make this a little bit smaller. We'll put this up here, right? And there we go. So you can always go from a percent to an empirical formula by just following these four steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to list out the three elements that we have here. So I have 59.9% carbon. I have 8.06% hydrogen. And I have 32.0% oxygen. Okay. So the first thing is, is we got to go from a percent to grams. How do we do that? Well, the total percentage is always out of 100%, right? And you should always just quickly add the percents that they give you just to make sure that you don't have any hidden uh, percentages. But we should be good here, or at least, at least as good as we can be, right? They gave us these numbers, so we have to work with these. But I'm just going to do a quick addition. And we get 99.96. That could be rounded to 100%, so we are good. So... We can assume that if the total percentage is out of 100, we could assume that the total gram sample that was taken was also 100%. This makes it easy because then we can say that the percentage that we have actually equals the grams that are given. So instead of saying 59.9% carbon, I have 59.9 grams of carbon. Instead of 8.06 uh percent of hydrogen, I have 8.06 grams of hydrogen, and I have 32 grams, and I'll do 32.0 grams of oxygen. And let me just space these out a little bit because we're going to be starting to build on some math here. Okay, so the first part is done. Now we got to go from grams to moles. How do we do that? Well, we've done tons of problems with this, right? Grams to moles, that's just a conversion. So we're going to be using the periodic table, okay? And when we do a conversion, we have to think of in terms of a ratio, which just means that I'm just going to multiply by my ratio, which is just something on top in the numerator and something on the denominator. So for each one of these, I'm just going to set that up for us. And... Think about it, if we want to convert, right? I don't want the unit that we have, right? I don't want grams of carbon or grams of hydrogen or grams of oxygen, so I'm gonna cancel that out. That goes on the opposite side. So grams of carbon will go on the bottom, grams of hydrogen will go on the bottom, and grams of oxygen will go on the bottom. The unit that we want is moles, so mole of carbon would go on the top, CC, right? They gotta go together mole of hydrogen, and then mole of oxygen will both go in the numerator on the top. 
But now the question is, what are these numbers that are going in the numerator or the denominator? That's where the mass numbers come into play. Now keep in mind, we're talking about mass numbers here, not atomic numbers. So we have the mass number here, and just know that this represents the amount of grams. So these numbers always go with the gram unit. So you just got to find where the gram is and plug it in. And this will always equal to one mole. If you're using the conversion from grams to moles, it's always one mole, one mole, one mole. One mole of hydrogen equals this amount in grams. One mole of carbon equals this amount in grams. And one mole of oxygen equals 16 grams. So one mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. One mole of hydrogen equals 1.008 grams of hydrogen. One mole of oxygen equals 16 grams of oxygen. Now the gram units cancel out. We don't have those anymore. They go bye-bye. And you're left with just the unit that you want. Moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, and moles of oxygen. Anything in the denominator is division. Denominator, divide, DD. So we're just going to do simple division. 59.9 divided by 12.01. I'm going to round after a few decimals. So I get 4.988. And that's mole of carbon. 8.06 divided by 1.008. We'll say 7.996 mole of hydrogen. And then 32 divided by 16 is a, a clear 2. We'll just say 2.00 mole of oxygen. Okay. So we got our mole values. So that's a check. Halfway there. Now we just got to get that mole ratio. Well, we saw what a ratio was before, right? It was just one number on the top divided by another number on the bottom. So as of right now, we have all of our numbers on the top. So we're going to be dividing each one of these by one number. What, what number is it though, right? Well, think about it. If we're dealing with the empirical formula, and a empirical formula is the the most simplified formula there is of a certain compound. It's the, it's the formula that has the most, the smallest whole numbers possible. So if an empirical formula is the most simplified, it has the smallest whole numbers possible, use that small idea. And we're always going to be dividing by the smallest number you see out of all of your moles. So that's what we're doing here. We're just going to be dividing by the small or the smallest number. So out of these three numbers, two is the smallest. So I'm gonna be dividing this by two, this one by two, and this one by two. Let's see what numbers we get now. Now at this stage of the game, if you get a number on your calculator that is very, 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 very close to a whole number, you will write it as a whole number. But if it's not very close, you have to keep the number that you have. So 4.998 divided by 2. Uh, I'm looking at that, and yeah, I can't round that. This is four point a uh, 2.494. So I can't round that number to a 3, and I can't round it down to a 2. It's like right stuck in the middle. 7.996 divided by 2. Now this one, I get 3.998. That's really, really close to four. So that one I can round. And then this one, two divided by two is just one. One mole of oxygen. But this guy is the problem, right? This number, I want to make it a whole number. So before we go to the empirical formula, I have to just do a quick correction here, okay? Now what you're going to do is this is just guess and check. Now all you're going to do is you're just going to multiply by numbers until you get the first whole number possible. Usually we start, you know, times in by one, but if you multiply by one, you get the same number. So usually I'll just say, start by multiplying by two. And let's see, does this new answer give us a whole number? Well, if we do 2.494 times two, ah, yeah, I get, I get 4.988, but 
this is really, really, really close to five. So I'm going to say that this gave me now five moles of carbon, but you gotta be fair. If you multiply this by two, what do you think you have to do to these? Yeah, you gotta be fair. So I gotta multiply this one by two and this one by two. Okay, so four times two is now we have eight moles of H and then one mole of oxygen times two, I now have two moles of oxygen. And now my mole ratio is done. Finally, we can just put together these numbers into our empirical formula. So you can start from the, the top and work your way down. It doesn't matter. I have a carbon and now I have five of them, right? So the five over here. So C5. I have hydrogen next and I have eight of those. So eight. And then I have oxygen next and I have two of those. So two. And do you see how I can't divide by any number that they're similar with, right? Five, there's no number that, you know, can, you can simplify that down, right? With an eight or a two. So this is your empirical formula. So this is lucite or plexiglass. So when you see those huge, you know, automobile windshields, it's just this simple molecule repeated multiple, multiple, multiple times. And that's it. So guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and that will help us out. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I hope you guys are learning. Chemistry is not hard. It's just a lot of just little itty bitty, bitty pieces of math, okay? So I got you guys. I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.